Uh, I should say, well, we're going, we're going to talk a bit about the handbook, uh, and then we're also going to talk about the, the Young Organic Farmer of the Year Award, uh, partly because, you know, we, we, we have a, a, an, we've made an award earlier in the year, and because uh, the co competition will be open for new applicants, so just a, a little bit about that afterwards. Um, I think the main thing I want to say about the handbook is that I, I, I hope that um, we can have a bit of a dis sort of a, an overview as to what the handbook provides and a few sort of maybe interesting figures for growers. But what I really want is to uh, have some discussion about whether there's scope for some, some collaboration in the future for collecting the data to make future handbooks more, more accurate, uh, but also for growers to have, have access to more production results, yields, market prices and so on, um, on, on a more regular basis. So uh, I'll talk a bit about that. Um, in the handbook, um, it, uh, it originated sometime around uh, uh, 1990, I think, um, and uh, with the collaboration with Nick Lamkin and then Suzanne Pardle. Um, and we've been, we're now, we're now on our 12th, 12th edition, um, and in theory we update it every year or two. In fact, we can't face doing it more often than every three years, and, and the last gap has been about five years, I think. So it's, it's long overdue. Um, but basically, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview as to, as to what it provides. Um, and these, I should say, um, last edition we, we, we took the big step to ac accept uh, sponsors and adverts, which uh, was um, something which uh, was um, sort of a bit controversial at the time, but seems to have worked all right. And, uh, you know, it, it does mean the thing is, is, uh, can cover its costs these days. Um, so just to give you an idea of what we try to do, we uh, collect providing data for all, all the individual enterprises and so we've got about, I don't know, eight or ten horticultural orientated enterprises um, such as these onions and uh, we provide the sort of uh, yield information and um, the, the prices, the prices we try to base on um, what we think uh, the current prices are and what whether, whether there are any likely major changes in the in the next 12 months um, but it is inevitably speculative um, and uh, uh, but with the yield data because we've been collecting yields for um, sort of 20 25 years now we're, we're getting a more more reliable yield data so um, it it uh, really it's a, a means of providing information for farmers to um, compare, benchmark their own results and to help them with their budgeting so that they can uh, do some long-term planning with a, with, with a bit more reliable information. And I should just say perhaps the most useful thing in it is actually about the sensitivity analysis which I suspect that people tend to ignore but this is where you can try to bring your individual farm circumstances uh, to uh, what you might expect your yields to be. Um, the last edition I tried to collect some data for smaller growers because often the, the yield data, the price data is really very different from some of the field scale vegetables which we're doing for um, sort of the potatoes, carrots, onions and so on. Um, and uh, this just um, picks up on some of the, the yields from some of the smaller, more intensive growers and some of the, the prices that they're getting. But you can see there are some gaps. Um, we really do need more information to uh, improve on the reliability of the data. Um, this is just to give you a sense of sort of the whole farm returns. And actually this data comes from the DEFRA Farm Business Survey um, and just gives you a, a feel for how conventional and organic holdings are operating. Um, but one of the problems is that they're only collecting data from nine organic holdings and so the reliability of the data is, um, is, is not particularly strong and um, as a result you get big fluctuations. So whereas um, in last year the organic was doing better than conventional, um, this year the organic um, income, farm business income halved and was doing significantly worse than the conventional. So all I can say is you should never just rely on one year's results. Um, 
just we do we spend a lot of time trying to get up to date with all of the grants and of course these change um, not just from year to year but by minute by minute um, and uh, this just gives you an idea of um, some of the level of grants that are currently available and um, I think uh, I when, when I was responsible for uh, um, uh, advising DEFRA on the levels of grants I, I would never have had the courage to say that top fruit growers needed a grant of £1920 a hectare to be comparable with conventional but fortunately the bean counters in Whitehall uh, didn't uh, take account of the niceties and uh, there you have these extraordinary levels of grants for top fruit. Um, and then of course we've got this new sustainable farming incentive and uh, we're still just working out really uh, how to use these but it does look as though they are all sort of additive to on top of the countryside stewardship organic grants and so between them you can actually get some some reasonable support and although for some smaller growers it may be difficult to, um, to make best use of these um, there does seem to have been some relaxation in that as I understand it now um, they've they have removed the minimum size but they require a minimum um, grant payment per year which I think is the 500 pounds uh, per applicant so I think it is now they, they are now more available uh, than they were historically uh, a few other uh, sustainable farming incentive grants, which I'm not going to go into, but basically this is the sort of thing that we cover in the um, in in the handbook. Um, so that's what it's it does. Um, it's it, it includes policy and marketing and uh, certification information and so on. Um, but um, ultimately. Uh, What's, what's useful for me is to know better what growers actually need in the terms of information um, and um, how can we collect that more reliably and uh, whether there's scope for some sort of link with Organic Research Centre uh, with regard to sort of funding this properly in the future. Um, I should just say that historically, um, well, Rebecca who's here, she's been particularly responsible for um, data collection um, that was probably four or five years ago now. Ten. Ten was it? Whatever. Um, uh, for our own, you know, we ha we have some informal data collection for our, uh, from our own contacts, and then um, 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 the I don't know was Jim Aplin was he part of that? Was that part of an OGA project um, in terms of collecting data from growers? But again, it, it seemed to be a one-off. Um, and sort of uh, I think collected quite a lot of information but didn't really get it to the point where it could be published in a really useful way so I think uh, we do need to find better ways of data collection not getting too bogged down in the detail um, and perhaps uh, some some sort of links between uh, OGA and uh, an organic research center so um, that's really well, I've got to say, so I think it's really over to you now to say whether I'm, I'm missing something, whether we can do more in the future. Do the grants cover Wales as well as England? Yes, and Ireland. What about Scotland? Yes, yeah. Although I have to say that uh, the Welsh situation is a rather gloomy one at the moment where it seems to have all been put on hold uh, for organic production. I'm just wondering if any of the yield data involves, like, post-harvest losses, like wastage, or, or even in the field, like mm. projects we've wasted, I work at a field together, yeah. we've wasted loads, we collect data of everything we've sold, uh -huh. so I have like yeah. a field of yeah. projects we've sold, but that's not the yield that can be produced on that area. Sure, it could be, it could be. It could be. Could be a hundred percent difference, I know, and it's, and we, we really are collecting uh, crops sold. Should we actually be having a farm handbook and a market garden handbook given that the culture is so different <laughs> the crops are different the method of cultivation is different and that might actually simplify things because you wouldn't ask a market gardener whether you have rose or not so the, but you would well yeah i mean my, my response to that actually would be to strengthen the the the, the one or two pages i've currently got on the small scale 
because a lot of the rest is duplicated anyway. But I think that section does does need strengthening. It really does, because you know it's it's where it is, and the whole thing has just evolved sort of step by step. And um, that's that's what I would would advocate. Mm. Thank you very much, Sauce. Thank you. <laughs>